In this video, we're going to walk through some of the tools that have been released as part of a Progress Communities discussion on how to monitor your PaaS instance. As part of that discussion, there were a set of scripts that were released by the A-Team into our public GitHub repository. These tools are unsupported, meaning they are not officially part of the product and they are not regularly maintained. However, they have been tested and successfully used in customer production environments. What you see here is the GitHub repository under Progress, Project Iceberg. Currently, there is only one utility that has been released, and that is for monitoring your PaaS instance using the OE Manager REST APIs. The repository is currently organized by product, so in this case, PaaS. The only option currently is management. The tools available are OE Manager, and the means by which to use them are written in ABL. Therefore, all of the code is written in ABL as procedures as seen here with the .p files. There is a readme file that offers some basic instructions and we will go through this in depth. Our first step is to clone the repository. Using a tool such as Tortoise Git, we can easily add the URL for the repository, select where we wish that to be cloned, and clone the repository. What we can do now is open a ProENV session and navigate to our directory. Once in the directory, we can then navigate to our PaaS management utilities. In this directory, we can see build.properties which are the default properties provided to you and you may override for your purposes. This is used by build XML, which is in turn used by ant. Ant is a task runner and using the targets within the build XML file, we have a set of options that we can utilize to manage our PaaS instance. By simply running pro ant, we can execute the code and get our usage instructions. What we can see here are default parameters, such as using HTTP, localhost, and port 8810 to control a PaaS instance. These are the default ports for the OE PaaS 1 instance, which we'll be using for our examples going forward. Notice there are defaults for the user ID and password, which relate to the container credentials for Tomcat. The instance is named OE PaaS 1, the ABL app likewise is named OEPAS1, and the web app which we will be working with is the root web app. There are some assumptions made about where the PaaS instance lives. By default, on Windows, we use the C Open Edge Work directory, which is configured by default with the out of the box OEPAS1 instance. For a better look at our results, I've enlarged the screen and scrolled to the top. What are included are tasks to start up the PaaS instance, query it, and shut it down. These are simply shortcuts to the TC man utility. They utilize the PaaSOE start command and various options to gracefully shut down and or restart your PaaS instance. Internal tools such as inventory can be utilized by tech support and will create a zip file of configuration files that are useful for debugging a PaaS instance. The compile utility is used to compile the .p programs used for management into R code. This is useful for production instances which cannot compile code on the fly but instead must run from pre-compiled R code. We have a series of status and management targets such as status which can show us operation of our PaaS instance. The tasks which perform read-only operations have been given an RO prefix so that you know these are non-destructive and will not affect operation of your PaaS instance. Those that do not have an RO prefix 
can and are intended to alter the behavior of your PaaS instance. For our first operational example, let's take a look at the status output. When we execute this, we need to remember that we're executing status against a single PaaS instance and only a particular ABL application in that PaaS instance. In our case, we're using the default ABL app of OEPaaS1, and this report shows when it has been executed against which OpenEdge release and which PaaS instance. We get a list of properties. These come from the openedge.properties file and are the values which were configured to set limits for the minimum and maximum agents, the number of connections or ABL sessions, as well as any timeouts. The most useful information here is perhaps the agent information display. This shows each agent which is currently running for the ABL application. In this case, we have a PID of 11276, which is showing as available. Within each agent, we can see the sessions. In this case, we have session IDs 4 and 7. And we have calculated fields. In this case, we keep count of the number of busy agents, or busy sessions rather, which shows a percent busy on the agent. And we have an approximate agent memory, which is a summation of all of the session memory plus the overhead memory. Now it's useful here to note that this information is not going to 100% match what is reported by the operating system, but it does give us a pretty good idea of how much memory PaaS believes has been consumed by the agent. There's also some information here, which while it's valid for OpenEdge 12, will not be present in OpenEdge 11, such as the dynamic max ABL sessions count, which was something that was added in OpenEdge 12.2 as part of the agent self-management feature. Some useful metrics coming from the session manager includes numbers of requests and times related to how long a connection may have waited. This replaces information such as the queue depth from the old ASB man query statement. Note that this information will only come back if collect metrics has been set to a non-zero value in the configuration. In this case, if we set the value to three, we get both the count and the time values. While this information is good, we actually need to see some data being pushed through the server to see what's going on. To do that, I have an endpoint configured which will mimic some busyness on the server by simply running a pause statement for a given amount of time. If I send this request and run our status again, we should see that the values have changed, indicating busyness on the server. As we can see, we have a request that's currently running. Session ID number four is active. And if we look at the client HTTP sessions, we can see that we have a request running on the web adapter with a unique request ID the client connection information shows that this is running the progress web internal web handler and the agent connection information shows a PID of 11276 and IP information about the request coming in. For our next example, let's see if we can't change the behavior of a running instance. In this case, we'll do just as we did a moment ago. We'll execute a request against the server except this time we're going to run one of the commands that will trim some of our sessions. We can see here that we're looking for the MS agents of OEPaaS1. We're going to use a graceful termination and we're going to terminate those sessions 4 and 7. So while we gave it a command to gracefully terminate, we can see that the connection has been severed. We did terminate the session out from under a running request and therefore we got back a error response in our client. Looking at the status itself, we can see that sessions four and seven have indeed been terminated and in their place we have session ID eight. If we wanna perform other actions against the PaaS instance, we can do some things such as stopping all of the current MS agents. So if we issue a pro ant stop, what this will do is query for all available agents 
and terminate those PIDs. When it terminates, it also dumps stack data automatically so you can see if the agent was running at the time, what may have been executing. Running our status again, we can see that there are currently no MS agents running. However, if we do try to execute against that server, this should cause a new agent to be started and we should see that information in the status screen. And here we have a new agent, 15088, which has two session IDs available and one of them is currently active servicing our client request. As I've shown, these scripts from our Iceberg repository provide an easy way to start, stop, and monitor your PAS OE instances.